What is going on, Patriots fans? This is Jace back with another edition of the Patriots Trap Podcast. Guys, it's finally time today. I'm getting into my film review, so I'm going to be going over um, players that we drafted, and I have film of them. I'm going to take probably my favorite 12 clips of them and what I think they're going to bring to the Patriots offense, really break it down and get into it. So first player I'm doing, second round pick, you know, pick 37. I'm going to do Washington wide receiver Jalen Polk. Now, this is a guy that I love more and more when I watch, and you know, you took him a little earlier than maybe I had him ranked and what I thought he would go. But this is a guy who I think is coming into a situation where New England just needs steady receivers. They need someone that, you know, like Jalen Polk has a lot of things that he can do well, but he's so steady in a lot of mo or in most of the things he does. So you're not getting the boomer bust talent, which I will do a film review on Javon Baker, which I think he has that boomer bust talent, but you're getting a guy that does a lot of things really well. So I'm super excited to get into this um, film breakdown, see what you guys think. Of course, let me know what your thoughts are of the film breakdown um, and then who or what you think of Jalen Polk going into this year. So really excited. And without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Thank you to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. With Underdog, you have a chance to 20 times your money in a single night. You just have to choose higher or lower for whatever player stats you want, and you have a chance to win big. Pick anywhere from two to five players by downloading their app or going to underdogfantasy.com. And now with their pick of insurance, you don't even have to hit on all your picks to win the money. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you use code PATCHDRIVE today for your first deposit matched up to $100. Okay, everybody. So let's jump right into this film review, guys. So like I mentioned, got probably about 10 to 11 clips here of some of the best things I think of Jalen Polk. I'm going to talk through them and, you know, say what um, I think is really good about Jalen Polk. So first one here this is his first game of the year. Okay. Jalen Polk ran a 4-5-2-40, right? So not the fastest. You know, people are going to knock his speed. Oh, he's not in the 4-3s. He's not in the 4-4s. Four this clip I love right here, okay? He's going to be in the shade down here at the bottom of the screen, right in between the numbers and the hash. So he's the number two receiver um, on the three-by-one side, okay? You're going to see him step on the toes of this defender, and then you're going to see him just run a skinny post, and he's just going to create separation. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, four, five, two speed. He can't do a bunch of things down the field. Well, that's a fault, or that's a false narrative with Jalen Polk. Okay? He had uh, not the ninth most um, deep yards, which is 20 plus yards, um, 567 yards um, from deep routes. He also had the 14, or he had 14 deep catches, which was tied for sixth in college football. So, this guy, yeah, four five two speed. He can get on you quickly, as you can see right here, break it off really well and create separation with the defender. Michael Penix Jr. throws a really good ball, puts it on him, and it's a touchdown. So I was really impressed when I went back and watched him, you know, expecting there to be, you know, hey, there's some deficiencies down the field. He can't really separate. He doesn't have that speed. No, that's not the case. He When he gets going, he can get going. And it, in my mind, he reminds me of what we saw with Puka Nakua last year. I'm not saying he's going to break the rookie receiving record, but you got he got knocked continuously for his speed. And what did he do? No one was within five yards of him whenever he caught the ball. He was always there and always um, making guys look silly. So I think he actually has really good down the field ability. Yeah, he's not going to be a Tyquan Thor in a Xavier Worthy out of this class, but Man, he creates separation too often than not down the field. So really like that about Jalen Polk. So next clip, okay, he's going to be at the top of the screen here, pretty much right on the 45-yard line, okay? Again, another deep ball, okay? So Jalen Polk, what I love about this clip is most of the time when you're just running a go route, defenders are going to try to squeeze you to the sideline, right? Because you have to get a foot in bounds. You can't catch it out of bounds. So that's just pretty much an extra defender. What I love about this is he's going to be able to uh, run a little stop and go. You see right there, quick little twitch. I'll rewind it. Okay. Right here. He does a little stutter and go just to get the corner off balance. Okay. Now he's able to run by him and he preserves the sideline so well, right? The corner right here is going to try to squeeze him to the sideline, but Jalen Polk preserves it. He stacks him. So he's right on top of him. Great ball by Michael Penix. And another thing that I think is very underrated about Jalen Polk is he has 
some of the best hands in the class, and he has really good ball skills. He does not drop a lot of things. You've already heard people say that too. Like his hands are like glue when he was going into rookie minicamp, stuff like that. So again, yeah, four, five, two speed. Oh, are we going to be worried about how well he can go down the field? Well, this is a clip right here where he's able to create a good three yards of separation and make a play down the field. Obviously, great ball, and I hope that Drake May is able to deliver something like that, but preserves the sideline, gives a, a over-the-shoulder opportunity for the quarterback to put it in. He's able to track it in there. So the speed for me, although it's not elite and top tier, it's not a concern when I go through and watch this film. And we'll see if that's kind of how it plays into um, there. So, okay, next clip right here. Jalen Polk's going to be down at the bottom um, on the 30 yard, about to the 30 yard line, right? So in the middle of the hash and numbers, we call that the middle of the alley. Okay, so what you're going to see here, this is run after the catch ability. Now, that's another thing that. I don't necessarily think that he's like incredible at like he's not going to create a ton of run after the catch yards, but he did have 5.2 yards per catch after the reception. Um, and then he um, also forced 15 missed tackles, which was top 40 in the country amongst right, wide receivers. So he has a little bit to him. So you're going to see right here gets a little tip pass. He's able to come back and make it. Now, let's see. He looks dead in the water, right? He's got one, two, three, four guys pretty much right around him. Here he's going to go, make a guy miss, run through contact, break another tackle, run through contact, score a touchdown against Michigan State. So, yeah, you know, yeah, he's not juking guys out of his so socks, but he's a little bit of a bigger receiver, okay? He came in at six foot one, 203 pounds, probably going to add a little bit more weight to him uh, also in New England, but this just so shows, right? He's able to make a guy miss right there, run through an arm tackle, run through another arm or uh, ankle uh, attempt at his legs and score a touchdown. So really like his ability to do some of those things. Okay, next clip right here. So this is a condensed formation, right? So most of the time when teams go condensed, they're either trying to run crossing routes, they're getting guys closer to the line of scrimmage so it's easier to cross the formation, create kind of pick plays, or they're trying to create more space to the field, right? So if Jalen Polk's going to run an out route right here, he's just maybe created 10 more yards of space than if he were to line up on the numbers. In this case, he's going to run a little skinny post right here. Okay, so you're going to see him get inside, going to run another little skinny post. Look at Michael Penix, and this is what I talk about. Watch the concentration, the ball skills, and the ability to play through contact and come down with the catch, right? So nothing too special on the route, okay? Able to find it, boom. Little bit of an overthrow by Michael Penix. He goes up and gets it, catches it, and takes a vicious shot from the free safety and is still able to hold on for a 40-plus yard gain. So, yeah, great hands, great ball skills. That is a tough catch. When you know the safety's behind you, you're probably going to take one in the back. It's going to hurt. You have to go over the top of your head, make pretty much a laying out catch from behind. It's not easy. And he keeps his concentration. He keeps that um, and does a really good job there. So really impressed with that one. So next one right here. Okay, you got Jalen Polk. Sorry, let me rewind it. He's going to be the number two receiver at the top of the screen. He's going to be right on the hash um, on the three by one side. So you got an empty formation. He's on the hash on the three by one side. Okay, here we go again. Step on the receiver's toes outside release. Here he is stacking the receiver. See right here. It's a little bit of a hand fight. He's using his inside hand to kind of keep the receiver away from him and keep his distance, but not getting an offensive pass interference. And he's able to give a nice um, opportunity for Michael Penix to throw, but he tries to throw a back shoulder throw, but watch Jalen Polk adjust to it in the air. There's still a guy right on top of him. Or right underneath him, he's able to go up and make this contested catch and able to bring it down with those good hands. So I think Jalen Polk's a really good contested catch receiver. Okay, last year, um, he had 13 contested catches, which was top 15 amongst wide receivers. So a little bit of a bigger body. I don't see him as a true X receiver. I see him more as that Z type of guy, but he's able to go up and make catches like that. So why the heck wouldn't you give it to him, uh, give him an opportunity when he can. So really like that play from Jalen Polk um, going up and getting it and having a little bit of attitude towards the end. So next one right here. Okay. Let me rewind it again. Sorry. I'm not doing a good job at stopping. Okay. I talked about it. Good at contested catches. He's going to be in between the hash and the numbers up at the top of the screen on the single receiver side. Okay. This is just a simple goal line fade, right? You know, Boom, let's align him a little bit tighter. Let's give Michael Penix a chance to throw the ball to the back pylon and Jalen Polk to run under it. He steps up, hesitates, gives the cornerback something to think about, like an inside move, is able to move him, and then he just releases. Great throw. Again, it's not in the back pylon. What does Jalen Polk have to do? He has to go up and make the catch over top of the receiver, and what does he do? Yep, comes down with it for the touchdown. So really good contested catch ability really good ball skills he knows when to time his jump he's really good 
and he plays through contact. He, I really like how he plays through contact. Not a lot of things phase him when he's going up for a catch. Pretty dang consistent on things like that. So that's a big presence because the Patriots were horrible in the red zone last year. Absolutely horrible. So having a guy like that is a dang good um, opportunity for the Patriots. So next one here. Okay. You saw it. it's a touchdown, right? So here we go. Jalen Polk, another one. He's down at the bottom of, of the screen right here. Um, he's going to uh, do a little hesitation release. Okay. So he's going to get the corner to back up a little hesitates, gets that outside release. Michael Penix throws the ball back pylon able to get it creates plenty of separation. I'm going to pause it right before the catch right here against a good corner in the NFL. It's about all the separation you're going to be able to create, right? Doesn't give him a super uh, hard push off. It's not going to be offensive pass interference, but he's able to create enough separation. He's able to keep the sideline so he can stay in bounds. So the quarterback doesn't have to throw it out of bounds or he's getting pushed out of bounds. And he's able to make the catch right there. He gets both feet down right there. That's going to be an NFL touchdown. So, Big red zone threat right here for the Patriots coming in, even though he doesn't have that six foot three, six foot four type of body. So you guys might think this is the same clip, but it's not. Okay. He's in the exact same spot down here. So he's at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Um, on the hash, he's the uh receiver that's closest to the line of scrimmage. Okay. So right here, again, does a little hesitation, releases outside, is running away from him, holding the sideline. Look at the catch right there, right? Great ball by Michael Penix, first off, which I assume Drake May is going to be able to do. But look at the ability to just track it, have soft hands, catch it right over the shoulder, play through a little bit of contact. I'm sure, I know we can't see it clearly, but I'm sure the corner gets hands on his um, arm. And so, you know, it's easy to not play through contact and have that ball fall out. But boom, look at the separation right there. He's running with two yards of separation. A good quarterback in the NFL, which I believe Drake May is going to be, is going to be able to put that right on the money. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And those three red zone clips right there are more than what I saw from most of our receivers. You know, being able to have that hesitation off the line of scrimmage, make them think you're going to have an inside release, pop out, hold the sideline, give a, a area of what they call drop it in the basket over the shoulder. Or if he needs to go up and make a catch over a defender, he can do things like that. So really freaking like that. Okay. So right here, he's the number two receiver at the top of the screen. Um, He's lined up in the middle of the alley again, okay? So he's going to have a little bit of a failed double move here, right? So you're going to try to see he's going to go out and up. He gets inside on the corner. Michael Penix doesn't make the best read, right? This probably should be intercepted by the safety over top of him. Nonetheless, what does Jalen Polk do? He makes the quarterback right. He's going to go up and make a contested catch in between two defenders right there. And, you know, he comes down with the ball. That's all you can ask for, right? Quarterbacks in the NFL it's very hard to be perfect, right? You can be as close to perfect as possible, but there's maybe going to be a time where he just has to go up and say, hey, I'm better than you are, and I'm going to go make this play. And so right here, bad read by the quarterback, throws it up. What does he do? He goes, attacks the ball. He doesn't wait for it to come to him. He comes to the ball. He makes a catch in between two defenders, probably saves an interception, but at least, you know, gets a 30-yard uh, gain from the quarterback. So again, contested catches, smart, good hands, great at ball tracking, Really like um, what I'm seeing from Jalen Polk here. So, okay, down at the bottom of the screen here in the middle. Again, remember what I said. So he's going to have an inside release here. So watch what he's going to do setting up this corner. Most of the time, what we've seen is he's going to sell the inside release and run a fade. So now Washington's smart, right? Okay, well, let's give him an inside release. Let's make him think that he's going to run, you know, some sort of in-breaking route. Okay, so does this, gets inside leverage, pushes up field, and then watch this nasty route and watch him break it off right here. I think he's such a good, crisp route runner. Breaks it off here, creates plenty of separation. Yeah, he doesn't score a touchdown, but geez, he creates five yards of separation on this route right here. Inside release, steps on his toes, breaks it off with a snap, bam, right there, 12 yard gain for the offense. So fine tune his route running. He's a good route runner. He can break off at the top of routes. He can do in breaking out breaking routes. Um, and he's really good at manipulating the defender. So super excited for that. So, okay. This is a little bit of a weird one. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say weird, but this is his longest touchdown on the year, right? So this is a 98 yard touchdown. I believe he's going to play through contact right here. Okay. So he's at the top of the screen, um, in this stack formation, Okay, he's going to be the top guy now. So not the guy that ran is going to run the in-breaking route. He's just going to continue up the field. Again, it's another another double move. He's going to get held by the corner a little. It's very easy to fall down when you're getting held by the corner right here, right? Corner falls. He's trying to grab bigger body, stout, runs through it. He's able to catch it. Okay, now the thing that's a questionable thing is what happens when a guy has 4-5-2 speed? You think he's going to get caught. 
but he doesn't right here. He's able to run through contact and he's able to make the catch and the safety doesn't pull any closer to him. So there's no need for us to worry about him. Yeah, there might be guys that are faster than him, but he has that breakaway speed. He's not really going to make people. Um, people aren't going to catch him. And this is a 98 yard touchdown. So it's not like he's fresh. He's running a ton. He's super freaking tired. So really like to see that not getting caught by a free safety, not letting them um, catch him on those things. Okay. So guys right here, this is an overthrow by Michael Penix. So don't expect it to be a catch right here. Okay. He's going to be the number two receiver again. Okay. Up top. He's going to run this little crossing route. It's going to try to be a pick play. But watch this little stem right here. <laughs> Look at the corner that's guarding him. Straight up man coverage. Okay, they're bringing um, six guys, so it's zero. There's a little um, hole help because whoever they slid to is going to drop on the defensive line to have an extra cover guy, you know, for shallow crossers. But watch how silly it makes this guy look. Running a crossing route. Now, this is what I like about Jalen Polk, too. Okay, so he had 18 targets and 11 catches on crossing routes. That was his most caught ball, 230 yards. Uh, 230 of his 1,100 plus yards came from crossing routes. And I think that that's what the Patriots offense needs to have. They've had kind of a lack of it last couple of years. You haven't really had a guy that can do it consistently. But this little jab step right here that he does on this corner to get him turned around right there is so dirty. And gosh, it should be a freaking touchdown. If Michael Penix puts it on him, should be a touchdown. But this is such a great route able to create separation from the guy just by a little step and it's not choppy it's not like he's not doing a lot of things you know like that's slowing him down from the route he's literally just you know taking one step breaking off a route and making something happen so last one or sorry um last two here are going to come from the college football playoff game this is against texas right so not the college football national championship but the playoff game this is a sugar bowl he's going to be down at the bottom of the screen he's going to start right here on um the 20 yard line um, down at the bottom on the single receiver side with the tight end. Okay. Again, here's that in breaking route. And then look, it's a pretty much a post corner. So he sells it. He gets the leverage on the in breaking route. The corner feels like he needs to get on him. Boom, boom, comes back out. Great throw again, over the shoulder. Look at the catch right here over the shoulder in stride. Boom yards after the catch. Now he gets caught here. So my four five two argument like oh i don't see him get caught a lot yeah but what i love to see here is the ability for him post corner snap it off great ball tracking over the shoulder make a guy miss spin off an arm tackle the only thing he could do better here is if he were to score this dang ball and it's not like he you know can't do it but yeah that's that would be the only thing that he could do better there so last one here Again, college football national or sorry, college football playoff against Texas. They got two receivers outside the numbers up top. Jalen Polk's going to be the one at the bottom of the number, so he's right on the 30. Okay, he's going to make an inside release right here. He's able to now have leverage on this guy. Michael Penix makes a great read, but let's talk about the ball security and how good he is at tracking it. Yeah, boom. Ball's tipped. This could easily be, he could easily lose his concentration. Guy runs in front of him too. He's able to just track it so effortlessly. Just, you know, looks it right into his hands. Boom. Great little play right there. So I'm super excited about Jalen Polk. Like, I don't want to say it as a knock, but I think he comes in and he adds a, a level of sustainability and just like consistency that this offense needs. And he can be a dang good number two receiver. Like, I'm super excited to see what he can do for the Patriots and how he's going to make um, this offense better. You can line him up inside. You can line him up outside. You saw him at a bunch of different um, formations. He was the number two receiver at times. He was the number one really wide. He was in tight. His route tree, what he can do is pretty dang good. So I'm excited for Jalen Polk. Could they have taken A.D. Mitchell? Yeah, they could have. Could A.D. Mitchell have a couple off the field issues and stuff? That's what they said. We'll see. But man, Jalen Polk was as consistent as they could be for a team that was such a surprise making the national championship. And yeah, he played behind a top 10 pick in Roma Dunze. So it's hard. He kind of lived in Roma Dunze shadow, but he had um, 1,159 yards last year, 16.8 yards per catch, nine touchdowns for the university of Washington. I mean, when, when Roma Dunze wasn't available because teams were doubling him, they looked to go to this guy. So super excited to see um, what he can do for, um, the Patriots, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to have a Javon Baker and a Drake May film review coming out. So make sure you guys give this a like, subscribe to the channel, and then, of course, use code uh, 
use code Pat's Drive at Underdog Fantasy to get your first deposit matched up to two hundred and fifty dollars, guys. They just changed that, so usually it's a hundred dollars. But if you deposit two hundred and fifty dollars right now, you'll get your that deposit match, so you can get a free two hundred fifty bucks. You can get five hundred dollars to go bet on some NBA playoffs or whatever it is. So appreciate all the support, guys. And until next time, talk to you guys later.